and welcome to SORCOM University uh, webinar series. This is Bill Soto with SORCOM, and I'd like to continue our series with Module 4 and discuss our supported extras for our uh, Astra's PBX appliances. One of the extras that we have is the I.O. ports. Uh, whenever you have an FXS module, that is the first module in the left, in the, in the first um, position of the left, whether it be an Astrobank or a server, you'll have these I.O. ports that will come with that FXS. They have four inputs and two outputs. And possible usages could be for a fire or burglar, ar burglar alarm or intercom systems. And the outputs are commonly used uh, to open electric locks, like magnetic locks for doors or parking gates. So it's a nice application for these types of, um, of uh, applications that you may have with your clients. We also have a TCO, or telecom connector. This is used specifically for the FXS AstroBanks. Remember that we are 32 ports in the front of the AstroBank. We don't have the standard Amphenol uh, connector that you normally use because that's 24 port. So this is 32 port. So you can use this to plug into the back of the AstroBank and then strip the end of the cable in order to punch it down on the telephone blocks, commonly called 66 blocks. And we provide you with all the uh, color code table, the wire color code table, so you know which uh, wires go to what port. This is a sample implementation of Hialeah Park and Racetrack in Miami, Florida. Another way of installing the AstroBanks, and let me go over this a little bit, this is two XR3000 servers here. They're using our TwinStar hot failover solution. They have two PRIs, and they have over 90, oh, excuse me, um, 32, 64, yeah, 90 analog extensions. So when you look at the extensions here, you see all these RJ11 cables that are labeled and plugged in. Well, in this scenario, like I said, there's another way of connecting your FXS ports. You can either use our TCO cable and then punch down the wire directly on the 66 block, or you can order cables that are Amphenol and connect to the 66 block, and then on the other end, it's called an Octopus cable, and they have 24 RJ11 jacks. So these would connect to the AstroBank. Now, the the great thing about this implementation is that when you do it this way, you're actually making a patch panel out of the AstroBank for your analog extensions. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at uh, analog implementations with a, a high concentration of analog phones. We also have found a solution for connecting to paging systems. Now, when you're looking at new paging systems, commonly you might be using a IP-based system, which is fine. Uh, no issues there. However, if the client has an existing paging system, uh, Valcom or Bogan, and you are removing their old PBX and installing our SORCOM PBX, well, how are you going to connect to the paging system? We've created our own little paging adapter, which basically matches the impedance uh, into the amplifier. It connects to a standard FXS port, so it's power-driven or line-driven by that FXS port. No external power is required. So we can connect directly to an amplifier uh, input, or we can connect to a Valcom or Bogan input. Uh, it's $95, list price, very low cost, and makes it a very nice, simple way to connect to the paging system. With the XR2000 and 3000, you have the option of RAID support. Now, I have to admit it's a standard. I generally bid this as a standard, not even make it an option, because it is a very cost-effective option with SORCOM, and it's a very inexpensive insurance policy. Two hard disks are supplied. All blocks are replicated and mirrored. Should one disk fail, the second hard drive automatically takes over. An alarm and email is sent out to the system administrator, but your PBX doesn't skip a beat. We also provide a very nice utility for backing up the image that's on the hard drive. So when, you actually, uh, when we actually ship out a, a SORCOM server, we send it out with an image of the software that's on the server on the rapid recovery stick uh, if, when you order it with our servers. Now, again, I make this kind of a standard. I bid all my servers and appliances with it. I don't really make it an option. 
uh, because should you have a catastrophic failure of that hard drive, how are you going to re-image it and then load your backup? Well, this is a very quick and easy way of doing it. Now, you can load your backups on the USB stick, or you can carry the image of the Zorcom uh, image, uh, asterisk image on here, and then load your backup that you might have it somewhere else, whether it be on another server, on another hard drive somewhere in your land, whatever the case may be. But it's a very nice, convenient, and efficient way of being able to do the backups as well as being able to re-image the server. That ends Module 4, and I'll go ahead uh, in terms of our options, and I'll end this now, and we'll come back to Module 5 and go over TwinStar Hot Failover, Failover Software. Thank you.